What is going on everybody and welcome back. In this video, I've got my glasses on so you know we are gonna get into some serious details on how to tune your carburetor. Now, uh, we're gonna cover two things in this video. First, we are gonna show you how to set the correct fuel pressure and understand what is the correct fuel pressure for a carbureted engine. In this case, it's gonna be an Edelbrock, but this would apply to Hollies and other carburetors. In the second half of the video, we are gonna cover how to tune your idle mixture circuit using a combination of simple tools like a vacuum gauge, and the tachometer just to get everything dialed in. So let's get into it. The first part, which if you haven't seen, you can check the link in the description. That's how to install a carburetor. That's the very basics. But in this video, we are gonna start getting into the tuning. So I'm gonna show you what parts you need to purchase and how easy it is to get your tune dialed in before you really start getting into the details like, you know, cruise, wide open throttle transition, air fuel ratios. We will get to that later, but this video is gonna focus specifically on the idle mixture adjustment. So to get started, let me show you the parts that you may need to purchase for your vehicle in order to get everything tuned up right. Now that we've gone through the intro, I've got all the tools and parts laid out that we're gonna need. Now we're not gonna cover everything in this video, but I am gonna kind of talk through them real quick so you guys know what to expect in the next video when we really get into wideband air fuel ratio tuning. First things first, let's go over the tools. So. Um, these are very inexpensive. You can get them off of Amazon or from your local auto parts store. This is a vacuum gauge, so it's very easy to read. I recommend getting one that's larger. They make some um, that have, you know, a much larger reading, but this is useful because you're really only working in like the zero to 25 range. So that makes it very easy. Along with that, you may need to pick up um, just some thin vacuum hose. Sometimes they come with it. Now you may have a tachometer in your car and that's great, especially if it's digital, but sometimes if you have an analog tach, you're unable to see if the RPM changes by, you know, more than say 40 RPM, which is where they want you to go back and adjust the idle screw. So um, I like using this timing light. This is a dial back timing light, but also it gives you a digital readout of RPM. So you can use a tachometer, but I find this to be very useful. Um, again, you can have this set up right by the vehicle and then you're not going back and forth into the driver's seat to look at the tack. So not 100% necessary, but something I like to have. So those are the two tools in addition to just like screwdrivers and your basic hand tools you'll need. Pretty simple for the idle mixture adjustment. Let's dive into the other parts you're gonna need to buy. So um, in order to do this right, I highly recommend getting a fuel pressure gauge. Now on a carbureted application, you're really gonna be somewhere in that like five to seven PSI range. So you wanna find a low gauge. There's no benefit again to having a gauge that reads to 40, 50 PSI since you won't have that clarity um, at the low pressure ranges. So this is one I found from Summit Racing. Uh, it goes up to 15, but again, we'll be able to somewhere in between this three to six range is where we'll set it. Depending on the fuel pressure regulator you get, you may or may not need this. So this allows you to screw in um, the fuel pressure gauge and run in line, but some fuel pressure regulators do have a port on them. Now I was trying to save a little bit of money, so I got this one from Holly, um, and we'll talk about why there's three ports here. But basically this one does not have a spot for you to screw into, unfortunately. Some have a spot right here in the front. This is about a $40 uh, regulator, it does not. So it comes with a mounting bracket. This one is gonna come with two outs and an in. This is going to allow, in case you've got two ports, like I know some carburetors you've got um, you got your feed coming in, then you got two going on a carburetor, you might have two carburetors. If that's the case, uh, you're gonna need this, but for our application, it's a single carburetor, so we're gonna plug one of these, and the other two are gonna be a three-ace, by in our case, a 5 16 uh, fuel line barb fitting adapter. So if you've got three-ace hose, it'll still be a three-ace on this side, but it'll be a three-ace barb fitting on the other. So that's really all you're gonna need for this video. Um, let's touch on a few other things for in the future. But again, for the idle mixture circuit, this is all you'll need. We won't go into a ton of detail. Um, this is an AEM wideband uh, air fuel gauge. This comes with the bung you weld into the exhaust. It comes with all the wiring, the gauge itself. It comes with a sensor. These are about 180 bucks. There's a few different ones. I've had good luck with this one from AEM. That's gonna allow you to see what your engine's doing, but you're also gonna need to be able to tune it. So for your specific carburetor, you can pick up a calibration kit. This is the calibration kit, part number 1948. These are for the AVS2 carburetors. Um, so, but you may need a different part number for yours. But again, you will grab this and this is what you'll use later on. We're not gonna get to that in this video, but if you're buying everything at once, go ahead and pick these up at the same time. Just a kind of a quick thing. You're gonna wanna do all your tuning once the choke is fully open. That means the car has to be fully up to temp. So you don't just wanna start it up and start tuning right away because if the choke is still coming open, it could change a few things. Just because I'm curious, I'm gonna throw that, um, 
fuel pressure gauge in line before I install the regulator, just because I wanna see how much pressure this small block Ford is making just with the stock pump, because that might be helpful for you guys, because maybe you're thinking, hey, I don't need a fuel pressure regulator, and maybe you don't, but this is really the only way to find out. So we're gonna throw that on there and see. In the end, we're gonna shoot for 5.5 PSI of pressure. So let's throw that in and just see what it's reading totally stock. So this should be pretty self-explanatory, but make sure when you place this, now obviously I don't have the regulator in yet because I'm just doing initial check, but this needs to be downstream or closer to the carburetor than the regulator. If you have it before the regulator, you're gonna see the pressure coming from the pump and not what the regulator is supplying to the engine. So pretty basic, but you wanna put this after the regulator. Okay, so we've got it hooked in line here, um, and we are gonna go ahead and fire it up and just see uh, what the pressure is totally stock. I've also got my light hooked up just so I can monitor RPMs not required, but let's go ahead and get this thing started and see what the fuel pressure's like. Just got her fired up. Take a look at that gauge. So we're about seven and a half, give or take, PSI. That's actually too much. Let's follow the instructions for once. If you read, when you buy an Edelbrock carburetor like this ABS-2, they say 5.5. PSI. So it's good we got this regulator. And really what that means is any adjustments you're gonna do, it's gonna be the wrong fuel pressure. So it's gonna still work, but then if you add a regulator later and the fuel pressure is different, you may throw your tune off. So it's really a good idea to just get that thing set correctly to start with. These things don't cost very much money. Um, I think that was a good test. So we'll shut it down, we'll let it warm up, then we'll shut it down, we'll install the regulator, we'll dial it back to five and a half, and then we can start tuning. So I got it mocked up in here. Um, this isn't gonna be the final location just because I don't like having the fuel line so close to the heater hoses. It's just gonna heat your fuel unnecessarily. But for the time being, I just got it in there with some zip ties. Um, I had to install an elbow and a Street 90 or a Street 90 elbow in order to get it because unfortunately the in comes in through the bottom of the T and these other two are out. So this one's plugged. That one is going into the carburetor. We'll fire it up and just see, you know, factory settings, what does it do to the fuel pressure, and then we'll adjust it back down to 5.5. So I believe they say it's adjusted to seven from the factory, and that would appear to be pretty loud. Just break that lock up loose, get an Allen wrench to adjust that, you should be able to bring this down to just below six, we're shooting for five and a half, so between five and six. All right, that was a tough one to do with two hands, but we've got her adjusted um, right between five and six. I noticed when I gave a little gas, it actually dropped. So, maybe we'll adjust it up a little bit closer to six, just so it, it drops down to five and a half. Okay, so we got it hooked up, it's idling, it's up to temp, the choke is open. I've got my vacuum gauge hooked up here, between 16 and 16 and a half inches of mercury. This is hooked to your manifold vacuum. As long as I don't give it gas, it shouldn't add in centrifugal advance because, um, for vacuum advance, because I got it on the forwarded side. So it's all hooked up. Um, and what I found, actually, let me walk over here and show you something. So what I found was right out of the box, the actual screws were not even. Um, I'm saying roughly here because it's actually a little bit less, but the passenger and driver are not equal. Normally I like to see those equal. So uh, earlier I measured 16 and a half. I just said 16, so somewhere in there. I think we can do better. So we're gonna go ahead and adjust that. And what you're trying to see here is the highest vacuum you can get. Um, but you wanna also watch your RPM. You wanna set it at one RPM. If you see the RPM change by more than 40, you're gonna reset that back down and keep keep going. So I'm gonna hook up the timing light, show you what I mean. Okay, so our idle's a little bit high. Um, I'm actually back that down to 750. That's gonna be our baseline. Just come in here with your screwdriver. Get the car idle down. And this is why it's nice, because now I don't have to go back inside the car. I can see the, the exact RPM. So I'm gonna come down to a little bit more. So we're happy. Oh yeah, 750 all day. Okay, now let's look at our vacuum gauge again. Okay, 16. Now, it's, uh, it's time to get to adjusting here. So we're gonna start by trying to get them both. Um, we're gonna go both an inch and a half out, so I'm gonna have to put down the phone for a second. 
Uh, we'll see if I can. But basically, we're going to go both inch and a half out equal, and then look at our gauge. Okay, so you've got your vacuum gauge. Now, as you saw, I was I was at like 16 um, and 16, 16 and a half, which I thought I was gonna be able to get more. And actually I wasn't. So what I mean by that is you go in here and you have your two idle mixture screws. Now, turning them clockwise or, or tightening them will lean it out. Um, and likewise, backing them out will enrich in it. So what you're looking for is you wanna see, if you don't have a vacuum gauge, you're doing it by ear, you wanna see RPM increase. When RPM increases, typically, you'll see vacuum increase too. So basically what you do is you start with one, you kind of want to have them both at the same amount of turns out, and then you'll just start to go one way and go one way until you see a change um, in the gauge. So typically if you're, let's, let's say you're riching it up, normally that's what happens. So let's say you add a little bit more fuel, you see it start to come up. Normally I don't like to get too far. I like to go over to the other side and add the exact same amount and see what happens. And, and normally if, if one side helped and you do the other side, it'll be about the same. Then what you do is you come over and you look at your tachometer either inside the car or if you've got your timing light and you wanna see if that has increased by more than 40 RPM because if you're way off, if the carburetor is way off, it may increase by more than 40 RPM. If it does, come back in here and adjust this is your idle speed, not your idle mixture. Adjust your idle speed back down to the base setting. In my case, it was 750 RPM. And then you just keep repeating that process until you get the highest vacuum. Once you do, you stop. Adding more fuel is not going to make it improve. Actually, what you wanna do from there is once you get it to the point where you have the highest idle vacuum, you're gonna come back in and lean it out each side by a 16th of a turn. So. Um, we're gonna play around with it. We'll see if maybe we can get 17 out of this thing. I don't know. Um, we're talking super, super minute at this point. Sitting here fiddling with this thing. Got it, you know, 760s, 750s. Kind of bounces around in there. Right around 750. I got her up to 17. So <laughs> after all that tinkering, 17 is all I got. Um, Steady five and a half pounds of pressure. And uh, yeah, so about as good as she's gonna get. I don't really like the way the uh, fuel pressure regulator was sitting, so I just made up this little bracket. It's just some little three quarter inch flat stock. I just bent a 90 in it. Drilled a 5 16 hole. I'm gonna attach it using the bolt that goes in the intake. Drilled some quarter 20 holes here. It's nothing fancy. We'll see how it looks. Um, if I like it, I'll clean it up some more. It's still got a bunch of grind marks on it, but. Um, if I like it, I'll paint it, but we'll throw it on there, see how it looks. The idea is just to keep the fuel lines away from the coolant lines and just, you know, it's still hot under the hood, but you don't need, you know, 200 degree coolant lines heating your fuel. That's doing no good. If you've made it this far, um, I think we can both agree, you're going to be a pro at tuning your carburetor in no time. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Uh, like I said, this is part two of a multi-part series I'm going to do. In the next video, we're going to install this AEM wideband. Um, I'm going to show you what tools are required. There's a little bit more involved um, than what you just saw, but not too bad, especially if you have access to a welder. So in the next video, we will install the wideband. I'll show you how to place it, where to place it, things to consider when you're wiring it up. Um, it's really straightforward, but I'm going to show you that in the next video. In the following video, we're going to get the thing out on the road and start tuning using our Edelbrock calibration kit. Um, but for right now, thank you for watching. If you like the content, I would really appreciate it if you both like and subscribe to my channel. The more likes and views I get, it helps me keep the channel going, helps me buy stuff for the channel. So if you like the content, uh, please do not forget to hit that like and subscribe button. Until next time, see you later.